house and goons with greenish skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> Great respect for the cow. And now show that respect by showing how you can grow. I hate you. I hate you. Just a moment, Tinkerbell. What were you up to now? I'm sorry, Master, but I was outside racing our sports car on our circular track. Racing a sports car on a circular track? <laughs> yes, <Play>. sir. <laughs> but we have no time for these things now. Yes, master. But now is the moment we have waited for. Yes, master. Time to raise the flag and to sing our national anthem of our most glorious homeland. Sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Yes, sing it. master. Sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Glory, glory, Transylvania. Uh. The devils and bats will always maim you. Speech of mm, never give all the claim you. As we go stumbling mm, 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 through. Mm, 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 I plant by the side of the three toad slot that I will always <laughs> do my best to do my duty, to always obey the laws of the well wolf back, and to never rest until Bruce is once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that most glorious of homelands, my own. Gory, go, Transylvania, as we go driving through. Beep, beep. Oh, oh beautiful, man. You beep, beep, a counselor. You beep, beep, a counselor. Beautiful, man. Get up. I will help you. Oh, thank you. That's all I will do. Now, explain yourself. What is this about you were diving? Well, what? I was racing our sports car around our circular track, master. Very good. Did you win? No, master. I did not win because I had to make 159 pit stops. 150? Why so many pit stops? I had to make four for guess and 155 to ask directions. A sterling mass you'll never need. Yesterday we spent the day, the Oracle and I, discussing all the mystic signs, especially Gemini. That's the twins, he said to me. And if you haven't heard, they talk a lot. In fact, so much you can't get in a word. And Geminis are busy folk, like everybody's mother, rushing from one project here and off to do another. I said, that's wrong, completely wrong, a twisted point of view. I know, because I'm Gemini, he smiled and said, <laughs> me too. <laughs> the Bobo Bell and I am the Oracle. Ah, physic wizard, a clairvoyant, a sense medium. 
and a true friend to all crystal ball salesmen. Now, let us find out the horoscope for today. Swirling mist, whom the gods have kissed. Which sign, whose life, will fortune twist? Ah, today we are going to talk about Gemini. Well, I'm going to talk about Gemini, which should be of interest to anyone born between May the 21st and June the 20th. That's when Geminis are born. They are always on the move, running here, running there. With this exuberant personality, they easily win attention from others. Geminis are, are always bubbly and expressive and seem to do things in a most complicated but certainly interesting way. They can be superficial at times, but their charm and their style make them enjoyable and always stimulating persons. To be around, I, I mean, I bet you Geminis out there think you're pretty swell sign, huh? And that everybody loves you. Well, I'll tell you, you are particularly attracted to Aries, Libra, Leo, and, and Aquarius people. Mm, yes, they, they will make loyal and loving companions for you, complementing your personality with their own qualities, Gemini. Your lucky day is Wednesday, and your lucky number is five. However, I wouldn't go to the races every Wednesday, Gemini, and bet the number five horse. The stars are favorable towards cheerful Mercury, but not that favorable. Anyway, if your restless Geminis can settle down for a minute, because here is your prediction for today. Always carry the spare. I don't know why I never learn. Mystic Crystal, Crystal Ball, tell me now. Tell me all. You are capable of unraveling a mystery today that has been puzzling you for days. Be prepared to accept the truth boldly and calmly when and where you find it. Hmm, that's a strange prediction. Now, I wonder what the Buddha has to say about that. Is there a spirit in the room? Yes. Is there a spirit in the room? Make yourself known. Tell me, Budu, what is this strange mystery that will disappoint Geminis everywhere? Wait, I'll write this down. Yes? There is an O? Yes? Ah, I see. Now I've got it. It says the oracle is a fake. That is a terrible thing to say. Because there's no truth in such a thing. I don't have to sit here and take that. I can stand and take it. <coughs> well, it's better I sit. Ah, now it is time to read our letter for the day. Dear Oracle, what do oracles do during an eclipse? Well, I will tell you. Well, we usually go outside and watch. Eclipses are a very, very special time for scientists, because then you can, you can test to see what the sun is made of and, and things like that. But to a modern day oracle, they are just something to watch. There are two kinds of eclipses anyway. Eclipses of the moon when the earth passes between it and the sun, and the shadow of the Earth blacks out the moon. Then there is the eclipse of the sun, when the moon passes between our planet and the sun. In the old days, people used to think the eclipse heralded some, oh, some ghastly pestilence of war, or they thought a, a giant dragon was eating the sun or moon. Nowadays, of course, we know differently, and don't call on super, uh, superstition when we should call on science. Eclipses happen quite often, and to see all of them, we would have to be traveling constantly from one part of the world to the next. On the average, though, on one given area, you may see an eclipse about every oh, 20 to 30 years. But don't give up eclipse watching. It is better in some places than others, and is really terrific in Antarctica. Well, it feels as if it is time to, for me to go. Curses. Fooled and fouled again. Look to the stars. Always look to the stars. What does the oracle know? 
Go if you must, but come back. Ooga booga. <laughs> Hello, is Mrs. Wall there? No? Well, can I speak to Mr. Wall? He's not there either. Are there any Walls there? No. Well, this must make it pretty difficult to hang up pictures. No. Griselda said to me one day, I'm going to make some bread. If you would like to lend a hand, I'll give you some, she said. There's really nothing I'd like less, I told her in reply. She said, well, that's okay, but uh, can't say I didn't try. <laughs> Next day, she said to me, you know, you really were quite dense. The bread you didn't want came to $10.60. some of the weird people Sliver and I have met. Sliver and I just met my vacuum cleaner. We met them in our travels. For example, there were two cousins in Cleveland, Claude Contractor, who constructed condominiums in the clouds, and Clive, who, weather permitting, used to golf at the Cleveland Curling and County Club. Now, would you like to put that in your file of useless information? <laughs> Don't even know how I got to that. So anyway, that reminds me, here is today's recipe. Condominium Claude and Cleveland Club Clive's Claude and Cloudy Country Casserole, or CC and CCCCC Casserole. It's a classic. I don't believe what I just said. But anyway, let's get on with it. Now, let me check the ingredients again. Oh, yes. Here we go. We want some uh, chopped, shrunk sugar. Just a doubling for sweetness. Mm, mm. And speaking of sweetness, I'll sweep it up later. But speaking of sweetness, do you believe? I know. Eat your heart out. I can't stand it myself. No mirrors here. <laughs> I'd fall in love with me. Anyway, let's get on with it. Now, just for color, some little green stuff here. Hmm. Well, if I ever run out of firewood, I don't know where to go. Okay. Then what have we here? Oh, some more of the cassava tree starch. This really bloats into something huge. Hey, by the way, have you seen the the, uh, the little fellow upstairs called Brucey? Wow, what a hunk of monster. <laughs> oh, well, wishful thinking. And then the inevitable flower. Very good. Be neat, be neat. And now for the last ingredient, which we shall go over here and... Hello, darling, how are you today? Hmm? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> okay, now the last ingredient, oh, here it is. We'll just kind of take this in here, and this is a lemon, which is exactly what I'm cooking up. Okay, I think we're ready for the old pan. Where's my ingredient? Now I'll go to the cauldron here. Oh boy, watch it. Now we just 
Just mix it all in. Let it grow. Cauldron, cauldron, boil and trouble. Cauldron, boil. Cauldron, bubble. And now for tasters. <laughs> I have found now the solution on how to make Brucey work. How is that, Master? I am sure that by consulting my great-grandfather's diary, he will come up with an answer. Your great-grandfather's diary? Yes, go and get the diary. I just happen to have it with me. What a coincidence. Let us have a look here. Ah, oh, here it is. It says here that on October 31st, 1477, my grandfather attempted to hypnotize his monster. Here you go. Read this part to me. This, uh, October 31st, 1477. Today, I experimented with hypnotism. But my experiment met with failure when my monster would not concentrate. Aha! Now I understand. But I have even greater powers than my great-grandfather. I want you, Igor, to get me my hypnotizing kit. Your hypnotizing kit? That's right, and I'll tell you where to get it. Yes, Mr. Now, you will go down into the east wing of the castle. East wing castle. Then you will turn the corner, go and 400 the... yards along the hallway, into the first dungeon. Then you will find four boxes. It's not there. It's right over there. Yes, Master. Very good. Quickly, quickly. Now we will do it. All right, Brucey, I want you to concentrate. You will sleep. You will sleep. You're under my power. Yes, sleep, sleep. All right, Brucey, walk for me. Walk for me. All right. Igor, come back here. Igor, I want you to snap out of it. What is the matter with you? It's not for you to go to sleep when I say for Brucey to sleep. <laughs> I can't understand why this does not work. I have greater powers than my grandfather. It should work. There's so, some reason. Master. Never mind. Don't touch the cow. Master. What? You forgot to plug the plug in. Igor. Yes, ma'am. I have told you once. I've told you once. Do not cloud the issue with facts. <laughs> Thus he spoke, with a sinking heart. Beyond the law of action, let not the wise disturb the unwise. This helps not in its own revolution. <laughs> Pet that has a tail, of which I never tire. About the time the animals escaped a ghastly fire, it seems the penguins were the first to notice all the smoke. They set up such a howling that the doctors soon awoke. The elephants were quick to think, for soon as they arose, they filled their trunks with water then. They used them like a hose. The doctor says he thinks it is the only time he knows that he's been saved from certain death because someone used their nose. Hello? No, no. You cannot get any blood. No. No, goodbye. Wonder where the doctor is. Oh, he's over.
always playing jokes, the doctor. I'm the echo today, eh? <laughs> hello, little sir echo. Hello. How do you hello. do? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you, Igor? What have we got today, Dr. Oh, Pedro? Today we've got a beauty for you. We, this is called the black rat snake. He's all black, that's why. That's right. And you know what I call him? Uh, let me guess. What? Uh, Greeny. No, no, as a matter of fact, I call him Mitch. Uh, 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 Mitch. Yes, this uh, is Mitch, and isn't he a beautiful fellow? Hello, Mitch. Now, the usual length is six to seven feet. So Shit. That's right. Oh. Yes, he has a long way to go, this chap, you bet. Now, there's actually been a recorded length of 101 inches. 101 divided uh, by 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Oh, don't worry eight, about that uh, now. Eight now, foot you something. see he has a black back here with gray and black, a checkerboard stomach and white throat, see? Now, listen very, very carefully, and you'll hear what he does. To hear how he wiggles his tail, just like a rattlesnake. Watch this. Hold on. Do your number. Hear that? Ooh. That's his tail wiggling. That's right, yes. Oh, I don't want you mad at me, Mitch. Uh, 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 Ooh. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh. Now, he lives in old rocky and uh, wooded slopes, and it provides many hiding places for him. Now, as a pet, he eats very well. Yes, he's, well, he has a, a ravenous appetite. <laughs> Does that mean he eats ravens? No, no, no. It just means he has, he has a lot to fill up. <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> and strangely enough, if you, he has kind of a, a skunk-like smell, you know, which isn't very complimentary to him, but, well, we can't have everything, can we, Mitch? <laughs> I, w I wouldn't mind even if you had a skunk-like smell. Yeah, and you hear how he sounds like the rattlesnake. I mean, that could scare you in the forest, you know, if you yes. were to hear that, yes. <laughs> now, he should be handled at least three times a day. Three times a day, because he gets very lonely. And oh, don't we all get lonely on occasion, Igor? Me too. I know, I know you do. Well, they lay about 15 eggs when they do. And now, as I told you, the back's very shiny. Now, the young look very different than the adults, you see. It's strongly patterned on a black tail. Now, Igor, I want you to have Mitch. Little Mitch! I want you to have him, yep. Oop, oh, there he is. He's doing Ooh, his number. I'm just going to... You ask the sloth. Go ahead and ask the sloth. All right, right, Mr. Sloan, I got a fella here that goes. Yes, Could he stay for a little while? Well, I got a fella there that goes. Yes, well, don't worry about it, Igor. Because Dr. Petbet, he has a lot of friends here. Bye bye, bring. Mitch. Mitchy, bye bye. Bye bye, Igor. Mickey. Igor, remember. Pets are friends. That's right. I remember. Okay, off we go. Bye-bye. Oh, what a lovely Oh. Bye-bye, Igor. Bye. -bye. Oh. Bye, -bye, Bye. Dr. Petvet looks like a chipmunk. The hilarious house of Frightenstein will continue in a moment. If the sloth lets it. <laughs> knew a mosquito who drained a man of six pints of blood. And the guy didn't say a word. Oh, he groaned a lot, but he didn't say a... <laughs> Lunch time again. The professor knows that dogs can hear the sounds that humans can't. Just watch one once and watch the ears when it begins to pant. The professor thought it best if he'd try measuring this occurrence and found a dog on which to test vibrational endurance. He rigged machines with plugs and knobs and odd revolving gears, strapped down the dog and then stepped back with fingers in his ears. The sound began and grew quite loud and several windows shattered. The dog, however, didn't move as if none of this mattered. The professor turned it off just then and broke down in chaos of laughter. He said, how can I test the dog? I can't ask questions after. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and men and women and people? I am Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. The professor, they call me in this place, and you know what wonderful things emerge from here. 
I want to do this all again with the stoppers and the pins and the forks because it is something you can do and be enchanted by it. As I say again, a cork stopper with a pin and there is the pin head and I will draw that for you. So, pin head right there. Now this is supported in a chamber just for the purpose of support. Now here is another stopper that has a pin in it and that's the pin point. And as we agreed, if I put the pin point to the pin head, the system is unstable and will most certainly tip over. So what do I have here? I have this stopper with a pin point right there. Now why does it tip over? Well, the center of gravity of this upper stopper is somewhere in the stopper and it is above that point of support. And so we say the system is unstable. Now, if I take a fork whose center of gravity is somewhere in the handle, there, and another one whose center of gravity is in the handle, and I lodge these forks in here, I will show you forthwith what happens to the center of gravity of the system. There it is. Would you not expect the thing to fall off? No, it doesn't fall off. Why? Because this is why. I have put a fork in there, and I have put a fork in there, and here is the handle, and here is the handle, and the center of gravity of the one fork could well be here, and of the other fork it could well be here, and now the center of gravity of the system is right here, and the center of gravity is below the point of support, and the system is stable. Watch how stable. Oh, notice it fell off. Uh, <clears throat> a little inadvertence. Nature did not trouble me. I did not do right by nature. Watch. There it is. There it is. And now I should say a little more physics for those who are perhaps studying the subject. This system is in the lowest energy configuration, meaning that the energy of this system is the lowest possible. And if I do anything to it, it raises its energy. And nature, you know, wants to behave so that the energy of a system goes downhill. That's why the cone and the cylinder roll downhill. So let me do something to this. Let me lift it up. It has more energy, so it'll go down. Let me push it down. It has more energy. And that's where it wishes to be. Look at that. Oh, notice top of the pin is a little slippery, and there it is. I just love that. And if you are not enchanted by it, as I have been for 50 years, oh, you need your soul awakened, your spirit enlivened, your curiosity stirred, which is the purpose of my business here. And that leads me next this business of stability of a system to the Tower of Pisa. Here we have a cylinder cut askew on one end and it tips. A plumb line from its center of gravity falls inside the base. And notice I have named this Galileo, appropriately named. And now if I raise the center of gravity with a little sliver of the stuff, I have raised the center of gravity and the plumb line has been shifted to the right. If I add another block, I have raised the center of gravity and the plumb line has been shifted further to the right and pretty soon the plumb line is going to fall on the edge of the bottom, in which case the system will become, um, become unstable. Let's see if this is so. Aha, uh -huh, it is so. It is so. A plumb line now from the center of gravity is falling outside the base, and the system is unstable. More on the Tower of Pisa in a forthcoming program, and I thank you for watching. You know, the professor is almost as smart as I am. Not quite. Stop! <laughs> Hello, master. 
I see you practicing your dancing steps. What are you talking about, Igor? I am not practicing. The Count knows all the steps. Yes, <laughs> Master. Ah, the mail has arrived. And I've got to do the steps to get the mail. Don't get smart, Igor. <laughs> I haven't got time for him today, the mailman. I got all the mail, master. Let it go. Let's take a look at that. Okay. <laughs> hmm, and what's in the mail today? Oh, we got all kinds of things, master. Yeah, we'll sit over let's, here. Let's see which we'll go. Ah, here's a nice one. Ha uh -huh. It's a blank piece of paper, master. There's nothing written on it. Hmm. Probably written with invisible ink. Yes, master. But. Just remember, the mail came, and that is what counts. Yes, master. Counts. There's a nice little parcel here, master, Ooh. with a note in it. Wow. Ah, what does it, it say? It says, from your mother. Ah. Ah, my dear booby, I am sending you this because I know you have a sweet tooth. Ah. The other one is sort of cute, too. And by the way, don't you forget to give lots and lots and lots of candy to Igor. Let me see that, Igor. It doesn't say it. Just says to share the candy with Igor. Well, can't. I guess I don't read so good. Well, give me the candy. Let's have a look here at what Mamsie sent me. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. 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 Oh, well, it's all gone now. It's empty. Master, why didn't you give me some candy? The letter said you're supposed to give me half the candy. Igor, you wouldn't want to eat that candy. Look at it. How do you know I wouldn't like it? Well, look, it's all dirty and on the floor. And besides that, someone has been taking a bite out of each and every one. I just can't say that word. The guy that writes the scripts. He's funny. <laughs> I asked the old librarian if he had had a bump, for there I saw upon his head a painful-looking lump. He said that he'd been looking for a book to read in bed, and when it struck him what to read, it struck him on the head. <laughs> he said he'd climbed along the shelves, and just as he was turning, a book fell from the shelf above, a piece of higher learning. Simple Simon, show me first your penny. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, indeed, I have not any. It's getting pretty heavy, isn't it? Simple Simon went a fishing for to catch a whale. All the water he had got was in his mother's pail. Simple Simon went a hunting for to catch a hare. He rode a goat upon the streets, but couldn't find one there. He went to catch a dicky bird, and thought he could not fail. Because he got a little salt to put upon its tail. 
You hear that, Polly? Careful. He went to shoot a wild duck, but wild duck flew away. Says Simon, I can't hit him because he will not stay. Silly clown, did he expect the thing to hang around? <laughs> he went to ride a spotted cow that had a little calf. She threw him down upon the ground and made the people laugh. Once Simon had a great snowball and brought it in to roast. He laid it down upon the fire and soon the ball was lost. He went to try if cherries ripe did grow upon a thistle. He pricked his finger very much, which made poor Simon whistle. He went for water in a sieve. Soon it all ran through. And now poor simple Simon bid you all adieu. <laughs> Scary? Definitely not. Kind of foolish as a matter of fact, but fun to read. And you should go to your library and you should read. It's fun. The librarian says goodbye until we meet again. Goodbye. Oh, no, no. Do not go away. We will soon return. Everything's going to be all right. Hang in there. Ooga booga. As you well know. You are Igor. You should get yourself in shape like the cow up here. You never do any work. Answer that call, Igor. Yes, master. Hello? <laughs> No, he's hung up about something. All right, for you. Hello. Oh, hello, Mark. No, I'm just hanging around the bar. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm hanging around, but I'm under the bar. What's that? No, no, I'm swinging out, but the bar is holding me up. I mean, Igor was helping me to pull my chin up, Mark. No, my two feet aren't on the ground. No, I can't put my two feet on the ground. I'll, no, I'll never do it again. Here, hang up the phone, Igor. Igor, answer the phone. Hello? This is the police chief. A couple of my officers have been complaining about a green monster chasing their cars and biting off the fenders of those cars. <laughs> You'd better talk to the master. Just hang on a second, uh... Master? Ah, another one. Hello! Oh, hello, Count. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, I was just hanging around my bar. Uh, you better not drive, then. Eh, no, it's not that kind of a bar. I just can't lift my chin without help. I'm sorry to hear that. What you need is a successful experiment. You know, it wouldn't hide. By the way, there's been a green monster chasing our cars at night. Was it yours? I wish it were. Mine's afraid of the dark. I didn't think it was. Just checking. Here, Igor, tie that up and help the car down. Never mind the phone, never mind, just help me down. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. Master, the phone is ringing. I'm still the cow. And the royal blood is thicker than a telephone cable, don't you see? Yes, your countship, Master. Hello? Nobody there, Nobody miss. was there. Never mind, I will answer the next one. Ring, you little devils. Ha, ha, ha. Phone is ringing. Hello. No. No. I hope you're satisfied. You muffed up that call, too. Why didn't you help me down? Why did you touch a car? Check to my answering service. Yes, master. There is a message, Count. Well, what does it say? I forgot. Well, pick it up again and find out what it said. It says, Master, due to certain atmospheric conditions in the stratosphere, at the precise moment of this phone call, the flying flight storm phenomena for the first time in some 800 years experienced sunshine for a period of 10 seconds. Better late than never, weather forecasting service. I think I'll go back to my exercises. <laughs> Animals 
parts of Asia have one thing they can't abide, and that's the yearly visits of our friend, the Bawana Clyde. It seems whenever he's around, the animals just scatter. He's such a nuisance to us all, I've heard the monkeys chatter. He sets out traps to catch us, and he usually falls in, and then we end up to be the ones who have to rescue him. Booga booga, which means it's zany zoo time. Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Zany Zoo. Always a pleasure to meet you. And my name, as you well know by now, is Bawana Clyde Batty, at your service. Always happy to be of service to you. I just hurt myself quite a bit. But not to worry, not to worry. Now, with... Well, oh, I must have had one of those fancy bells put in. Hello, this is Bawana Clyde Batty speaking. I beg your pardon. The ring-tail flush nip. The ring-tail flush nip. I'll be happy to. Yes, yes, I will. All right, happy to do it. The ring-tail flush nip. All right, I have had a request for me to give a call of a wing-tail flush nip. Well, I hope I'll remember this one. It used to be tough as I recall. So oh, good, I think I got that right. I think I got that right. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is, before we get to our film. Now, I... Could you excuse me, please? Hello, Buona Claude Batty here. Yes. Oh, well, I'm sorry, we can't do that right now. No. No, I'm afraid not. No, there's too much to do. And many things I'll have to tell the children. All right? All right, you call in again another time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Now, what I wanted to say to you was, you'll notice that when we film some of our animals, you will see that they are in fences. Now, there are new zoos going to be built whereby we will be in fences. Now, here's how it works. We will be all fenced in and the animals will run wild and take a look at us for a change, because that's what we want to have happen, the animals running free as they were meant to do. Is that not correct? That is correct. All right, now it's time for us to get... Ah, right on, right on. All right, time to get to our film for today. There we go. All right, checking out, right, switch on, and there we go, and what have we got here? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, there's that big chap, isn't it? That is a brown bear. Now, now some, some have shade of brown colored coat. Now, they live in wild, mountainous country in the forest. They wander singularly or in family parties. Now, the home range averages 20 miles in radius. Isn't that something now? Now, they can stray beyond, but Normally walk on all fours. Stand straight up, just like that. Isn't that a beautiful beast? Oh, a magnificent looking animal. My goodness gracious. But I certainly hope he has enough berries to eat. Certainly wouldn't want him coming after me, eh? Running up a tree and all that. All right, must be going now. And as we say here in Zany Zoo all the time, Ooga Booga. Which remember, the young in the animal kingdom listen to their mums and dads. You do the same and they'll steer you straight. Right. <laughs> this super show will return in a minute. 58 seconds, 59, what does it all mean? I am the wolf man. <laughs> dig it, dig it, dig it, it's happening, yeah. And we're going to hear some of them moldy goldies from way back when. Like 1970. 
because I got a winner that you gonna dig. I dig the Wolfman. Groovy. What did he say? He said, I have a growth on my neck. What is it? My head. You know, it's really true that mosquitoes think about blood all the time. I mean, we just can't seem to get it out of our systems. Not your systems. <laughs> Definitely funny. Uh-oh, lunch. It is written that it is better to ride a lame horse than a bird in the hunt. Polly doesn't like it. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come along. Remember, Ooga Booga. <laughs>